is going to be the indie games that you should look out for coming up in the next year or so. Uh, now, I was just, just got my, uh, my Game Informer and I had a cool inter- article about all the new games coming out that came out at GDC and PAX. And so I just want to look through and, and talk about a couple of my favorite ones. Um, first one to start off with was a game called Strafe. It's kind of a, a throwback to the classic 90s FPS shooters where you do have a health bar and it's, you know, it's, it's graphic wise like some of those. It, it kind of reminded me of it's in the vein of like Duke and Quake, uh, Duke, Doom and Quake and Duke Nukem. Yeah. Um, and but the cool thing I thought about this was this and this is going to be a theme that you hear me say a lot, um, but it's got procedurally generated uh, environments. So nothing's the same every time you play it through. It's all going to be kind of a little bit different here and there uh, when cool. you play through, and that just uh, seems interesting to me. Yeah, there's there that that kind of game has been around for a while, but you don't see yeah. it very often. Um, I remember the old uh, Toe Jam and Earl did that essentially. You know, yeah, they, they randomized the environments. Yeah. Yeah, and um, uh, what was it? Daggerfall actually was able to, to had randomly generated dungeons that would appear wherever, and the it would make itself. I guess on the fly. I don't know how they did it, but whatever. which is cool, knowing that if you play through it once, it's not going to be the same way you play through it the second time. So exactly, and and I see a lot more indie games doing it. Like there was Splunky. There was a indie game. It was kind of like a platformer, but every place you went into, anytime you went in there, like every cave you went into was totally different. <laughs> every single time, there there was no real, you know, there, you weren't doing the same thing the, over and over. The other games were like, hey, that was a great idea. Why don't we continue doing something like mm-hmm. that? It, it adds something to the game. It's not the easiest thing to do, for sure. Uh, and I think a, part of the thing is like a lot of the AAA titles with their giant 3D environments would probably be complicated to get right. Mm-hmm. Um, but for somewhat stripped down of a game, any, even some more, I guess just the more... The more complicated it is, the more impressive it is. But you can do it easier for a game where you don't have to worry about, you know, super giant world in 3D yeah, you, HD graphics. You just gotta go shoot some guys in some different rooms. <laughs> That's, yeah. You know. All right. So let's move it on to the next one. The next one is Prismata. Um, now this one is not a game that I necessarily would necessarily really go for, but it, it's a very popular popular genre right now, and it is it, it is described as a sci-fi card game where everybody has access to the same core cards and you kind of battle out. It's kind of like Hearthstone, um, that card game out there, and like the Magic games on PC and stuff like that have been getting more and more popular, but you don't necessarily have to like grind and get better cards than everybody else. Everybody has the same core cards. It's just how you use them in your strategy that really defines how you play. And so I I think that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, I would be more likely to get a a game if I was going to get a card game like this because it doesn't seem like yeah it's it's easy to pick up but it's difficult to master mm. so you'll definitely have a skill level difference for sure but it's not like hey if I'm good at a card game I don't have to sink you know 50 hours into leveling up and getting all these cards or however these like Hearthstone did it so I think it's Hearthstone more... had uh, had multiple modes i think there was a mode where it just randomizes whatever and gives random cards to each player that they don't get to keep whatever they it's just whatever they have for that round hmm. no, um, see that would be interesting to me but but they also did have the build up your card set mode uh, yeah. and play with what you have yeah so uh, that was prismata and the next is moon hunters and out of all of the ones I've looked at, it's probably this one and the next one I'll, I'll talk about that are pretty interesting. Well, we have a couple more, but Moon Hunters is a co-op action RPG where you explore a Mesopotamian-themed world with procedurally that is procedurally generated. Again, procedurally generated, um, and how you play depends on how the culture and mythology of said world is going to develop. So. It looked like it was like a Final Fantasy VI type game. You go, you get your own characters, you go dungeon raiding, and you do a lot of cool things like that. So this one really interested me because I still love, you know, like the Final Fantasies and stuff like that. And if you can give me something like that with a little bit more, you know, to do in the world almost because it's going to be random almost. Um, I'm pretty interested in that. And, you know, RPGs is one of those genres that you don't have to have great graphics. You know, I wouldn't necessarily want to play um, like an action adventure game, you know, in the in the 
the ilk of like the Batmans, uh, the Uncharted's and stuff that has the horrible graphics. I, it wouldn't translate as well. But if you do the graphics on purpose this way, I think it works just as well. Yeah, it's funny too because when I think of where a lot of graphics have been pushed, it's especially on consoles anyway, it was originally in RPGs. Mm-hmm. Um, like you think about the Final Fantasy cutscenes, you think about yeah, a lot of things. Some like cinematics, yeah. But, but you're right, you don't need it. It has a story to, if it's a good story, if it has good game mechanics, that holds it up without spectacular graphics. You want to have something that looks decent, but I think the original RPGs essentially were the text-based games, right? You just type yeah. in something. Yeah, right? I'm not cool with those, though. I need more graphics. I'm just saying, text. It can, if it can work with that, a it little can more work graphics with than less text. than the cutting-edge best graphics yeah. ever. Yeah, that is true. That's true. And then the next one is also going to be an RPG. It's called Earthlock Festival of Magic. And now this will be a turn-based RPG um, where the Earth is stopped spinning. And half of it stays light, and half of it stays dark. Oh, no. Uh, and so monsters and stuff must pop up after this happens, because you go out on a quest, and you have about eight characters that you get in your group. And it just it sounded, and it looked a lot like, you know, another, again, it's not great graphics, but it's a little better than, like, you would see in Moon Hunters. Um, but it's going to be, it looks interesting. I, I like myself a good turn-based RPG. I think those have kind of died out as of recently. I mean, even Final Fantasy is going away from turn-based RPGs. So uh, I, I do love, I, what do they call those? I guess they call them JRPGs. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Because, but I mean, like, JRPG is so broad now. Yeah, it's true. Because they've gone away from turn-based games. Yeah. But. Well, like the new Final Fantasy 15. That's not turn-based at all, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I don't see many new games coming out as turn-based games. Most new games come out as, like, as, like something like the, the Final Fantasies. It's an action RPG, the Tales of Vesperia. Don't get me wrong, I love those games. I like the gameplay mechanics. I think it's very interesting. I think Final Fantasy 13, whereas the story was absolutely horrible, the linear gameplay was absolutely horrible, uh, the rails, being on rails the whole time was all absolutely horrible, the combat system was actually a lot of fun, and it was still kind of a t- turn-based system. So I think there's still more room to be explored where you can kind of mold the two together. But, um, yeah, I, I don't want to go totally away from it, and I don't want to just keep doing the same thing. So mm. I don't know. it's hard to keep finding new ways to innovate in you know the same vein so um yeah and so that's earthlock and uh you know we we can't forget about our buddy chris chung because he's got a ton of great indie games that you can play right now you don't have to wait for these um you have a game even though they're still in development well there's a lot yeah i mean hey man he does it himself so he's got he's got to do what i'm saying you can still play them but they are in development so we can anticipate them while playing them Exactly, exactly. Um, you have Cat Lateral Damage. We previewed that on a really old show, but that was an awesome game. You run around, you're destroying things as a cat. It's a lot of fun. Um, you had uh, Building Bashers, where you're like a, a Optimus Prime building, and you, you transform from a robot and destroy things. That was pretty destroy cool. Destroy other buildings. Other buildings, <laughs> yeah. Um, other robots. <laughs> there, there's Businessman Barrage which is like uh, kind of one of these games. It's ah, it's kind of like a Space Invaders almost, but not quite. But you're a businessman trying to make it through um, <laughs> uh, navigating a Japanese train station. So it's like a mix between, and this is the description, it's a mix between uh, Japanese bullet hell games and Frogger. <laughs> it's just, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome game. Um, so yeah, I mean, and you can go, and he's got more up there than that. Um, you have... I wonder how he has time to make all those games, to be honest with you. Yeah. Dude, Am dude, I dude. back? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, I was gone for a second, but now I'm back. Um, so Virtual Joust, that was the last one I talked about. And, yeah, so check out Chris Chung. You can find him at chrischung.com. Uh, if you go slash games, you can get straight to the game. So, yeah, check out Chris Chung. But... Well, let us know what indie games you're looking forward to. Hit us up, comments down below, of course, at Where's My Face on Twitter, Google Plus, and Facebook. Always good ways getting a hold of us.